Aisha Yesufu takes on Malam Nasa Erufai. Few years ago, she might have needed an introduction, but today she's a household name in the Nigerian social media political sphere. Having rose to prominence through the Bring Back Our Guest Advocacy and other efforts aimed at holding the government accountable. Oh, so sad. See just what you what you turned yourself into. Mm. Allah, sorry, key. Oh, poor guy. Oh, this is what you turned into. Okay. Why well, did you put it once and final word? Now it's afterward. Mm -hmm. You are forgiving. You are the one forgiving people. You know well. You know well at all, at all. You think all those kind, emu, jemu, you people, they deal with for Kaduna, where they look you. Now me want to try. I go scatter you like this, I design you, put you for ground, put you for where you belong to. I'm sure you know it. I'm not one of those people who are contract seeking, appointing seeking people who go around you people's offices or try to take picture with you. I don't have time for that shit. Let me tell you, you understand? You want to do, you, you saw me before Twitter. You and I know each other, I will fire you before Twitter. Remember, the Regent Secondary School is still the same me. I will deal with you very well on the streets if it's that nonsense you want to bring in here. First of all, cheap, attention-seeking. The only person who seeks attention, who throws tantrums around when he's not in the pay of government, is you, accidental public servant, in case you know or in case you don't know. I haven't and I'm not interested in being in any government pay or being any public servant of whatever kind. You are the one, the moment you are not earning from government, you turn into that attention-seeking, tantrum-throwing, name-calling person that you are. Remember 2013, 2012, 2014? The tweets are there. I love to go back to my tweets. What about you? Do you? <laughs> the President Gulag Jonathan administration felt her pangs as she kept them on their toes as regards living up to their responsibilities, most especially on the issue of rescuing the kidnapped Chibok guests. Aisha Yusufu was a constant pain in the neck of the Jonathan administration as she never ceased to berate the government each time they goofed and she was always there to defend the rights of defenseless Nigerians. Little wonder she was dubbed the defender of humanity. She of course learned from the best for having come under the tutelage of famous Obi Ezekwisili, the conscience of a nation. Aisha's fearless disposition and non-compromising nature doesn't come as a surprise. Prior to the 2015 elections, Aisha Yusuf just like other activists at that time, was the darling of the opposition or Progressive Congress, APC, who also cheered her criticisms of the then ruling People's Democratic Party. And today the APC is at the receiving end of her venom and they seem, and they seem to have been rattled in no small measure. If people thought that Aisha was going to be soft on the Buari administration having canvassed for his election five years ago, I am sure by now their doubts have been cleared as Aisha Yusufu has shown a level of commitment that, unmatched, that is unmatched in keeping government at all levels accountable. Her latest victim is the governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasa Erufai, who she reminded of his money, uh, many political comments chiding the Jonathan administration. Comparing his comments to the current political situation in the country, showing how the current APC-led government is now an embodiment of all that they criticized the PDP-led administration for. As Nigerians applauded Aisha Yusufu for giving the Kaduna state governor a taste of his own medicine and exposing the hypocrisy of the current government, who rode on the change mantra to power. Aisha Yusufu dug up old political comments made by Malam Erufai, tweets ranging from his comments on the level of corruption in the country then, 
to insecurity and even to the use of law enforcement agents in intimidating citizens. Aisha Yesufu, no doubt, unsettled the Kaduna state government in no small measure. In series of tweets as seen below. So from uh, Aisha Yesufu recent uh, tweet, she said, Aren't you the same? Men of zero integrity will speak based on which side they are on. And according to what Erufai said, I'm thinking I, I'm sure he's replying or tweeting back based on what uh, Nasa Erufai tweeted uh, 11th uh, of uh, January 2015. And this is what uh, Nasa Erufai said. He said, Jonathan leading Nigeria to hell. FFK, director of media and publicity of Jonathan's campaign, punching.com, you know, saying that Jonathan was leading the Nigerian uh, people or as a country leading to hell. And that was what uh, Erufai said. And again, another one says, uh, why is the SSS harassing law-abiding citizens? Why so scared of uh, Boko Haram that they block one half of an expressway? We do not feel safe. That was what uh, Erufai said. And that was on the 10th of January 2012. And Aisha responded to this particular comment that Nasa Erufai made on Twitter then. He said, let me borrow this uh, this at Erufai tweet, saying, why is this, why is the DSS harassing law-abiding citizens? Why so scared of Boko Haram that they block one half of an expressway? We do not feel safe. That was what he said. You know, repeating what Erufai said, those were the things they were saying that time when they were in opposition. And again, Erufai uh the night of january that same 2012 he said how went from hero debt forgiveness to zero and public enemy is what's being made into a movie that was what uh, erufai said as at that time and aisha again retweeted it and say how erufai went from a great public servant to a pathetic governor governor oppressing citizens to compensate for the bullying he received as a child is what's being made into a movie. Hmm. Let's ask this man with zero integrity. That is what Erufai uh, Aisha said there. And according to what Erufai said, in se on 2nd of uh, January 2015, Erufai said, How many presidential jets are enough for a child that grew up with no shoes? Hmm. And that was what Erufai tweeted, according to Dr. M.K. Hassan in January 2nd, 2015. Immediately, Erufai tweeted it. And Aisha is now asking that, let's ask the man with zero integrity. Since uh, Erufai was asking Jonathan then, because Jonathan was the president as at then, talking about uh, this jet, and you can recall what is happening to the you know, issue of jet that the president's daughter used jet to uh, one of the northern states, and a lot of lawyers have come out to say, No, you can't do that because this, uh, this, uh, the president's daughter is not a government official. Because those who are supposed to use that presidential jet, you know, we are already, we've already been told about those that can use the presidential jet. But now the presidency is coming out now that the girl went for an official official uh, uh trip or something that it was the one of the governors that invited her and, and so if the governor invited her does it mean the governor has not been inviting some you know some individuals so because of that the state government has to go and get a a presidential jet or any jet or the the jet of the whatever it has to be on the account of a of the of the state people on it uh, at individual basis you know they get invited by all these uh, government officials and all of that so that is what the president or the presidency is trying to defend that because the girl was invited by a, a governor, so that was why they used that presidential jet. You know, all of the things they criticize in a nutshell, all the things that they criticize, they criticize the then governments. That is exactly what they are doing, and that is why this woman is taking it upon them and say, No, you do this, you did that. And when people come out, you know, the reason why a lot of things are not just even working together or that we are not even united. Some people will come and say, yo, forget it. Were you not part of the people that uh, brought this government? And so if they brought this government, we'll continue to change them until we get the desired results that we, we want. If people are doing the wrong thing, so we should keep quiet because I, 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 
encourage you to come into the government or I supported you because I supported you. I think that's the best uh, statement or the best language to be used. Because I supported you. Now you're not doing... Because you, I supported you because you told me that you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. And you were pointing out the errors of the... Uh, the, the maybe the damp uh, administration that if you come in you are going to change the narratives i said okay let us give you a trial you know maybe a trial will convince us and you came in or you came in or you come in and you are doing something different so because i i supported you say let me just give you a chance then i shouldn't say anything that is where we are getting the problem again and that's where these politicians are getting away with it because they know that we are always having something to defend one thing at a particular time because i supported you then when you are doing wrong thing i should not say anything and that's why a lot of people have problem with say show they will see say oh you you help this government to come in and now face it if anybody does something that is not right you condemn it you condemn the action not that because so you supported because i supported you yesterday and you are doing the wrong thing i should continue to support you it doesn't work that way it doesn't work that way those are the people that we need to be commending because as eh, 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 each time they always tell people, express their feelings towards what the government of the day is doing that is not right. You, you don't just keep quiet. And people who are always uh, uh, in that, uh, you know, school of thought or who have that school of thought that because of that, uh, because uh, you supported this person, you won't say anything. So meaning if somebody, you can do the same thing because you supported somebody and you are not going to, if the person does something that is not in line with what the person has said before, meaning you are still going to be supporting the person. That means we are not going to go anywhere. That is hypocrisy. We are not going to go anywhere. So we should need to commend these people that even whichever government that comes in, if they do the wrong thing, they will, they will be criticized. And if they do the right thing, they will be applauded. That is the way it ought to be. Because if we, there's no uh, check and balances, if there's no you know, looking into what they are doing, you just keep quiet. How do you move forward? How do we move forward? Even somebody that does the right thing, they still talk about the person, not to talk of you are doing otherwise. It will be talk, talked about. Malam Nasai Rufai obviously responding to Aisha Yusufu tweeted, Afterward, the most efficient and effective way to hurt those seeking on end attention, cheap retweets and Twitter following is to ignore them. Hmm? Depression and psychosis set in for ignored inertis and non-entities manifesting into anger, insults, fabrications. I will forgive you. And Aisha Yusufu not backing down had a response for the governor. Hey. And she said, Nasa Erufai that should be seeking forgiveness is forgiving people. This low life, backstabbing, lies peddler, rumor monger, who ranted and raved when he was not in government and net his way to being a governor has mouth to talk. From all indications, it seems Aisha Yesufu is not netting down her guns at any time. Neither is she relenting in her efforts at holding the governments at all levels accountable for like one of the many watched word of the bring back our guest group goes the price of freedom is eternal vigilance you can imagine erufai's a uh, tweet no they can't defend themselves now you know that is they, if you give it to them they will not have anything to do they will not have anything to say because all that they have said um, I'm, I'm glad that Erufai did not say these are fake news or they are just that Aisha made it up because they brought the all the things he said. If you go back to his uh, Twitter handle, everything Erufai said are inside that uh, in his Twitter page. So now he cannot defend it. He cannot say, no, these are fake things. Or he cannot say, you know, thank God, even if you have said it and it's not even written down, of course, there will be this thing that must have captured it, whether by video or audio. You know, your voice must have been accepted because when you are saying it and you are videoing you, yes, they will, they will have a record on ground. Not to talk of you. Tweet, he tweeted it. Now he cannot defend all that he said because Aisha Yesufu brought every, all the evidence out. The only thing Erufai could say is that the people are, they are is seeking for attention. So that means when you were doing it that time, you were seeking for attention because now people can relate with what you said and what you guys are doing now. You can see the hypocrisy of the highest order. They will say, do what I do. Do what I say, but don't do what I do. You can criticize other people. They are, that's why I say a lot of people are just in, on, on the waiting list. That if after another one government leaves, they will want to come back. They will want to take, uh, to, to take their turn 
And as I say, it's always turn by turn. They want to take their turn. That's why you see that a lot of people are not talking because they are on the wait waiting list. They want to see after this government has gone, after these people who are holding one position or the other, they are looking for a way to, you know, to fall in, into that category. You see what is happening. So that was what they were doing when the good luck Jonathan administration was ongoing. They were criticizing, bringing out all manner of things. And at the end of the day, as soon as they were not criticizing, so because so that they will they will come in. That means that's why people say it, all of them, you know, it's just a scam. You can hear what Erufai said now. He couldn't even defend it. The next thing he was just guessing at the woman that uh, the uh, the most efficient and effective way to hurt those seeking on end attention uh, and cheap tweets and retweets and Twitter following is to ignore them. Don't ignore them. You need to respond to what has been said and what you are, you know, they referred to. You know, they are referring to what you have said. You need, you need to answer all of those things. How do you relate to them? How do you marry what you said then and what you guys are doing now? You need to answer the question if you are bold enough. You don't need to ignore them. You see what he's, he's, he was talking about, that they need to ignore them because all of those who are criticizing the government, they are, they are, they are uh, attention seekers. So meaning you were attention seekers. He could not even defend what he said. Now, the only thing is, is to he say is to forgive them and to, to ignore them. And you trust Aisha... Yes, Ufu. he answered, she answered him back. So, guys, uh, let's hear your opinion concerning uh, what is going on between Aisha and Erufai and what he said before and what they are doing, even as a government. All that they criticize, they are doing double of it in double dose. That is what they are giving back to Nigeria. And meanwhile, not knowing that they were pretending because they wanted to come into power. And someone says, Erufai and his class are conscious, conscienceless. He is another terrible bad leader. The seeds of his deeds will germinate and ruin him one day. Someone say God will judge them. God will judge them all. So guys, leave your comments below in the comment section. Thank you very much. Bye.